Park Lodge Hotel Group is a proud sponsor of Style & Glamour by Yolanda. Welcome to Style and Glamour with Yolanda's. Today is a new way you're going to look at jewelry, a new way you're going to be inspired by this wonderful, wonderful lady who just opened a great new store out in the Metro West area called Matsu. Dava Matsu is with us today, and she just opened on the Boston Post Road. Easy to get to, easy to park, and a delightful salon. So talk to me about your new location, Dava. I discovered this uh, little gem of a spot just driving by and I think the universe jumped out and told me that it might be time for me to reopen the store. Um, Funny, now you said reopen the store. Think about this. Yeah. You are on Newbury Street. Many people watching would remember for 33 years. Yeah. And the store then was the same name? It was. Okay. And yeah, I, I actually initially thought I would name it something new. And then after having seen this spot, I realized that there's probably some legacy to the 32 years on Newbury Street. So I wanted to continue on with, with um, the name because it has a following. People knew it. I wouldn't have to necessarily start from scratch, even though this is a whole new paradigm um, due to its location and the way that I'm curating the space. Now, when you were on Newbury Street, you still had this jewelry line called Nymph, right? Towards the end of my, my reign there, yes. Right. Yeah. So when you started on 34 years ago, what did you carry then? Fitz and Floyd China, Sasaki Crystal. Oh, really? Okay. Dinnerware, yes. And we supplied dinnerware, dinner. It was all about then layering uh, porcelain, layering colors for the table. We were dressing the table, actually, back oh, okay. then. And, and then you went into? Futons, actually. Futons, bedding. Oh. <laughs> Futons, wow. bedding, comforters, duvet, hand-painted duvet, uh, duvet, sheets, bedding, as I said, and uh, we just started building up on the lifestyle and um, the brand of, of people being able to, you know, grow their homes. I mean, we were all much younger back then. Of this course, era. I guess. I guess. And, um, you know, just buying condos, and it was a whole new... Uh, a new way to look at home furnishings, really, at that okay. time. We were pioneers in the field, I think. Um, and but you were always unique in style. I mean, you have uh, such a way of presenting things and putting things together, but now combining jewelry, some home supplies, and clothing mm -hmm. in this new location. Mm -hmm. It's lifestyle. It's, it's all life about lifestyle, yeah. All lifestyle. Yeah. But, you know, you go back and inspire so many women, and there's so much to your jewelry pieces you're gonna women are now gonna take I mean I'm taking a whole new look where I've always been into the glitz and glamour of rhinestones and diamonds now I'm seeing gemstones tell us a little bit about this I, I, I I'm an earth sign I was born in September um, I don't know if that's why but it's somehow I I love glamour I love glitz but what I really love is the juxtaposition of of the two together okay. and finding something really sparkly but the colors might be earthy in tone you know like looking like bark but it sparkles mm -hmm. you know you know so so that just turns me on I guess you know it just really turns me on and it makes it allows the wearer to not think about having it for an occasion and it's an everyday thing and it becomes part of your inner spirit it becomes part of your life it becomes part of your look now think about this. I came in today very simply dressed with just a turtleneck and a pair of pants. And you just added this fabulous piece. Tell me about this piece because I'm so intrigued with it. Well, Yolanda, you wore a terrific color as a canvas for the piece, I have to say. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a uh, historical piece in that the, the coin is, is an ancient Greek coin 
and I can't say exactly the year. Um, I think it's somewhere around the 1700s, 1800s. Mm -hmm. And it's got a sterling silver bezel around it. And I wanted that to be the focal point. Um, I added olive wood, pyrite, and deep, deep appetite. It almost looks like jasper, but the green actually is appetite. And it's a rare, rare um, form of appetite. It's not a birthstone, um, but... A the uniqueness, though, of combining sterling, the coin, all of this in one necklace is amazing. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I that's, do. I, that's, I'm it's very the impressed. It's, it's the art of it. And it's it's earthy, it's grounding, mm -hmm. but it's glamorous at the same time. Exactly. Without that's what being I was going to say. Exactly. Ostentatious, I guess. Right, right. Yeah. But you love doing this. I mean, this is something that you talk about. Earlier I asked you, does um, what you do have anything to do with horoscopes? But when you started your conversation, you talked about when you were born and the sign. You're right. So it does have a little bit about it. It does. Yeah. It does, but I don't focus on that. I think it just it's uh -huh. just there. It's just sort of like the underlying thread throughout everything. Um, but from there, I go into the color of the stone for the month, as I was, as I was saying before. Now, this month is what? This month is turquoise. Okay. And a lot of women, a lot of people think turquoise belongs at St. Bart. It belongs on the beach. It belongs on right. a shore. That's what I would think. It belongs in the Mediterranean, but it's the Mediterranean, you know, Mediterranean sea color. Um, the beauty of it, though, is that I have, I've got quite a bit of turquoise in Matsu right now. Um, and it, it's a color that resonates on everybody. It's very grounding. It's protecting. But, but again, the beauty is that it can be worn in the wintertime and it's great with chocolate. Chocolate brown, it's great with eggplant. It's oh, you're right, it does. So it complements, and it actually really complements skin tones, and it complements people's feeling. And once you walk into the store or in anywhere where I have these pieces, they, people, I, I observe women going to it not because they need a piece of jewelry, but because the color speaks with the, to them or the shape speaks to them. Right. And that is a sure sign that it's it's calling their name or it's calling their spirit. And and to me it's like it's a it's a guaranteed success for them to be wearing it, that I will sell the piece and they walk out never usually in a bag. It's not even in a bag. It walk, they walk out with it on their body. Well now you put one on me that's layered but it's already all in one necklace. Now yours is layered, right? Correct. Two different ones on at one time? Three, actually. Three. So yeah. talk about those, because well, I think I those are inspiring. Starting with these green diamonds, <laughs> which are very, very rare. Tiny, tiny, tiny little diamonds. And um, the ruby necklace with the diamond cross and then green amethyst. I called it crystals and you corrected me. Well, it, it looks like crystal, <laughs> but it is. I mean, it's obviously translucent right. and they're f highly faceted, but this is this reminds me of a rosary. So, it's sacred. You know, it feels sacred to me. It all feels sacred to me. All of it feels sacred <laughs> to me actually. So, well, it, you know, it's taking like almost that rosary bead feeling into Jewelry, it makes you feel good. It's true. It's very true. And it's not about Catholicism or, or Judaism. It's not about that. No. It's more about faith. And, um, and, and, and that's, that's the thing. It's sort of like a common interest that everybody can share without s discriminating or segregating your religion or your beliefs and that sort of thing. And it's, it's, it's a common um, item that everybody can like. So, so actually a girl coming in to buy a topaz stone could be that she was born in December and she just feels she wants this stone of the month, right? And usually she's not conscious of it, though. She doesn't? No. It's, it sort of jumps out at her. The color is there. Yeah, the color or the feeling or whatever it is that she gets or she's reading into it and she'll say, I need to touch this. And that's the best. That's just just so rewarding for me, you know? Well, you know, you, you've done so much to inspire women, this one is the one that intrigues me the most. So tell us about this. This intrigues me the most too because <laughs> it's a very uncanny combination. Um, I'm also going to hold it up with this more rubies because this is a terrific thing to layer. What What's going on here is, is a, a lot of pyrite and this pyrite is not shiny. Um, it looks as though it's been dug out of the ground and 
I love that. I love the way that makes me feel, but I've combined it with rubies. Mm -hmm. And this was a finding that I just discovered not too long ago, and it's brass. It unscrews. And yes, back in the 80s, we'd probably be doing something else with it, but at the moment, what I had done is, I need a pin in order to remove right, the scroll. Right, that's okay, don't pull it up. This, was, this whole piece was inspired by my watching and becoming addicted and in falling in love with Outlander, the Outlander series. We won't talk about Jamie at the moment, but anyway. <laughs> um, and what I have in here are, is a scroll that I created and I wrote down the, all of the herbs that they used back in the 1700s prior to when they had any medic, medicine to be able to use for healing. And on the same scroll are stone, there's three or four different stones that was talked about in book three, which was turquoise, ruby, citrine, turquoise, ruby, and citrine for protection. And they carry them in their pockets. And I was just blown away by that. I mean, I had no idea. I'm not even interested in history at, until I started really Great. paying attention sure. to this. And it, it, inspired, it inspired these pieces. Um, so that, that's what's going on here. But it's a nice thing, you know, it's almost like you're wearing something that's also protecting you and it makes you feel good mm -hmm. is that little beautiful little capsule there that's and it's actually a t i mean it's like a talisman so yeah you it's know. absolutely fantastic yeah now july you tell me is the height of summer which we know is the height of summer and it's hot but it's the richest of the gemstones you said in july you tell me that that's it's funny isn't it it's it's like red it's cause red hot is that why i mean you say it's well, like the reds i honestly haven't read about how the stones were assigned their month. Mm -hmm. Something I definitely will be looking into in the very near future. Um, but but ruby, which is the passion stone, and you know ruby also it's it's the month of Cancer, right? Um, but it's also when a lot of the fruits and vegetables are their richest. It's right prior to harvest. Okay. But beets and red potatoes and radishes and all that sort of thing. And on my blog for July, I'm quite certain I wrote about it. Uh, <clears throat> And it feeds you. They're antioxidants, no matter what. I, I don't, again, it does relate to the fact that it's hot in summer, but it, it's more to me about the... The, the harvesting of The these. harvesting and the, the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, pomegranate juice and cranberry oh, yeah, juice well, and all of that is all fighting cancer. Exactly. You know, and rubies do the same thing. Uh -huh. So I like to sort of bring food into, you know, again, creating another thread of course. throughout the month, you know. So right. that was what was going on um, for me in, in the month of, of, of July. But the fact remained, the fact is that I just took the month, I took the birthstone and then I Combined. built it up from there. Right. Now you talk about the blues being very soothing, which I agree. I mean, I think you go to a lot of hospitals or places where you need calming, and I see a lot of ice blue and soft blue. Everything looks so calming, and I think that's what you were talking about with the blues. Is there a special blue you like better than others? Maybe. Absolutely. You know, lapis lazuli, which is a very magical um, healing color is extreme. I don't have it here. I have it in the store. It's very, very, very intense blue. And yet aquamarine, which is the month, is the birthstone for um, March, mm -hmm. is more water-like. It's quieter. It's soothing. It allows you to wear uh, uh, maybe brighter clothing with it because it becomes more of a backdrop. Right. The lapis, in this case, is more of a focal point. Mm -hmm. So you know, depending on where you want, how you want to wear your clothing, will determine which of the, t the blues to, to, um, to, to, you know, combine. But I like the idea of the water because it's more natural. I see. It's just simply more natural and, like you said, soothing and calming. But now, after you closed your store after 33 years, that's a big, a long time to be you know, waiting on customers and inspiring people and doing things. And then you went to doing the blog, which was also fun for you, but still wasn't enough, right? It wasn't enough. I, I know how many people were reading the blog. I, I didn't get enough feedback from it. And it's not that I need to be validated. I just want to know that I'm actually touching somebody's heart. That's really what the blog is about for me. And, and it's maybe about um, originally... I actually did start the blog prior to when I closed the store, and it was my life journey, and I, I know that I was putting myself out there, and I wasn't bashful about it. 
in there's a fine line between what's private and what's close to my heart, what not to share, what to share, which is why I then started discussing the stones because it speaks, it spoke to my heart, but it was a common element that I thought everybody could understand. Right. And from there came the food, mm -hmm. but it wasn't enough. And after having been fortunate enough to have this wonderful position at Neiman Marcus for two years, um, that wasn't enough either, and I didn't know what that meant. But what I real, and I also often don't think of myself as being an artist, creative, yes, but an artist, I never really thought about it. But having been in that in the corporate environment, mm -hmm. which I really wanted to taste, I had never had, I never, I had never worked in a corporate envir environment before, and I wanted to see what it was like, and I did do that, but. That was when I started realizing there's something missing, something missing, something missing. I can't be as creative as I want to be. <laughs> I, I just, it took the three years after closing my store to figure out, which now has come full circle, that I could be in the store, nobody, maybe nobody will walk in for five hours, and I'm okay with that. Well, you're in a surrounding that you absolutely love yes. and that you created. Correct. Now, there's another really, they're all interesting pieces. Tell me about this from Afghanistan. Oh. This is quite a piece. I could see that on a the, all black outfit. The, it's a red um, outfit. This finding is from Afghanistan. It's, I'm not sure, 200 years old. It's dented. It's, it's real. It's, the whole thing is real. Um, this is pretty, pretty global, this whole piece. The banana, the banana seeds are from Africa. The Yemen beads, these were trading beads from the Middle East, and this black coral with sterling silver, little sterling silver inlay. This, these are very, very expensive. And you know they're becoming rarer and rarer. I'm not sure how much longer they're mm -hmm. even gonna be around for. I was fortunate enough to find them. Um, the silver on here, it's base metal silver. It's all from Afghanistan. I needed to do something with the bottom because there was a big hole in it. So I had my producer create a tassel. And we used more Afghan beads. They're like right. little bells uh -huh. with rubies. So again, this juxtapositioning going on here, the rubies being very elegant and very healing with the base metal. And when this is, and oh, by the way, <clears throat> there's a ruby and an emerald. On the clasp. Natural emerald, yes, at the, at the at the um, back as an accent, introducing more energy. But you just hold this, and this is a true talisman. It gives you the energy. This, you know, it, it's, it it, just, you feel it, and you feel it, you do. People don't think about it, and they, it's, because I guess one of my, one of my goals for 2015 probably would be to be able to trigger women, maybe one of their senses, or just trigger something that they're not really awake about. And a lot of us are sleepwalking, you know, I, it's, it's true, it's sad, but I'd like to see people become more awake and aware of what's going on inside. Because this is not just a piece of jewelry. This is not, it, it, it's more than that. I'd it's say so, yeah. more of your inner self and yes. feelings. Mm -hmm. And Now, you would talk about the pink. Now, I always remember, I used to say, you know, pink is not a strong color when I used to sell things, you know, to customers. And I knew that it was an easy sell, like ice blue is easy to sell. But the pink was not like making a statement, not baby, I'm talking baby pink now. Yep. But hot pink makes a statement. Correct. Now I know that you say that pink goes into amethyst, is that one pink of the- Pink does go into amethyst, but hot pink has one connotation. Pale pink has another, and I think that the rose quartz, in this case, okay. rose quartz is soft and I was never really attracted to it because I felt like it was too immature. Mm -hmm. But what it is is actually soothing, and I'm just looking for um, rose quartz is known as the love stone. Okay, and it's it's most favored for its ability in speeding up the process for those seeking true love, mending broken relationships, and jazzing up your existing romance life. However, oh, nice for the divorced girl. <laughs> <laughs> however, I do have a friend who who was nurturing one of her friends who was having a mental breakdown or a stressed out breakdown or something. And she asked me to have, so she said, what will work? And I did a little further research on rose quartz and I had a rose quartz necklace made for her. I don't know if she just wanted to believe it or what, but she finally seeked the help that she needed. It was a catalyst for her to seek, to, for her to get what she really, really needed from a, a healing doctor. healing process, basically. It was part of the healing stepping stone. Right, exactly. And no pun intended. But it's very elegant, whereas 
back to the color thing, hot pink isn't necessarily elegant. It's jolting. It's courageous to wear. And there's really no hot pink stone unless it's dyed. But right. I, it's not something I would ever carry or make or work with, really. And now, on recent visit of the royal family here, we talk about the purples, which is a royal color, right? Mm -hmm. And it always has been. I mean, I always uh, thought of bright rubies and sapphires and purples would be perfect for the royalty. It's very majestic. Very majestic. Yeah. Purple. It takes, but you know, they, they relate purple sometimes to just older women. Do you feel that way? I think purple has a bad rap. I mean, it also, <laughs> I really do. It's, it's really sad because it's such a wonderful color on everyone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think of, you know, the new age crazy people in Cambridge, okay? I mean, there's <laughs> that stereotype. So, so it's got several different, right. bad, several different stereotypical bad raps. Um, however, like we just said, it's, it's such a majestic color. And what I've noticed, though, is that people are afraid to wear purple. I haven't figured out what the reason for that is. They, I think, I do think it's got to do with a relationship, an older connotation that maybe their mother wore too much of it or <laughs> yeah, they maybe. only wore yeah. that or something of this sort. And it's a barrier they really need to get through. Right. And in order to do that, I believe they need to face it and wear <laughs> it, you know. But amethyst is the birthstone for February. And it is so regal. It's so rich. And I love working with it doesn't sell that well but maybe it's just the time of year and that's also you know another stone that works all year round right. by the way but right. but it's wonderful in the winter time and it's 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 got a little bit of blue it's got a little bit of red in it therefore it's got a beautiful combination balance really of both warm and cold colors so it's it's just a perfect a perfect combination of both so when a client, new client's going to visit your wonderful new location and looking forward to myself coming. Uh, tell me a little bit, about, do you try to show them like a whole outfit or do you just let them browse and or talk to them about it? I'm still getting Process. acclimated to the small space. It's It's been carefully edited and um, it's sort of like a museum and I, I can sell. I can sell hard but I want I read when people walk in, they're going to something's going to get some. One of their senses will definitely be triggered right. immediately, and I have I, I I I rely on my intuition whether or not they want to be addressed. Well, they will always say be right. greeted, but sometimes they just need to feel it space. out. Feel and space. I need to feel them out, feeling it out first. Right. So um, I can create outfits. I can create proportions. I can create anything they they need, but I need to sort of figure out. I mean, a woman came in the other day. She didn't take her coat off or anything, but she was just, she was just, she kept going around in circles and she couldn't, she, she knew what she wanted, but she was just trying to envelop it all. And well, you it was, have so much there that's so unique. I mean, it's not like looking at a, a glass case of diamonds. No. I mean, you're looking at just even the few pieces you brought us today, all of them. Take a look at the bracelets. Let's talk about those bracelets. The bracelets I brought here are they're pretty earthy again, um, but you know, I've uh, sandalwood, sandalwood and diamonds, for instance. Sandalwood is a protection stone. It's got that wonderful faint scent as though it's just been chopped from the tree. They are becoming more and more precious and harder to find and more expensive. So, anyway, this one has got the diamond. This is the wrist piece of wrist diamond with an emerald and a ruby on the back. This is another wonderful, ancient, vintage. Uh, bead from Afghanistan, which I paired with a peridot and a moonstone. Ancient coin. And then we go into the Tibetan turquoise with an Afghan bell. Mm -hmm. And this 200-year-old piece of ruby. Uh, I'm sorry, amber. Okay. And you just roll them on. It's funny because yes, it's been a trend. Do you find it's, now, like through the years, when you've been selling these, do you do you find girls come in and then buy a second and a third? To absolutely. Layer? Well, I try to sell them three at the same time, but you know they're scared, and mm -hmm. um, and and I I was a little more. I mean, I can see the evolution of the jewelry itself as as time has gone on. So it's become a bit more bold, and right. sometimes you don't need to layer the bracelets as much, and they're always wearing a watch. So I. Right, you know, exactly. They, that's the, their priority. So I'll try to have them work it on mm -hmm. the other hand, and maybe they'll be wearing sterling or gold or whatever. So a lot of this just can be layered with anything that you may have existing. 
in your wardrobe. Now, the other bracelets that are kind of crystal-like, but you, you oh. call it more rosary bead. Yes. This is, um, this is actually Afghan, Afghan um, jasper. Okay. And it's got a sparkle to it, but it's an earthy sparkle. Well, you notice my eye goes to that because I, I always go things that are a little well, this more This would be wonderful sparkly. with the, with what you're sure, wearing absolutely. today, actually. Perfect. But there's so many colors in there, right. and it's such a wonderful piece to to. It's a it's a, I call it glue. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a piece that a lot of people are missing in their wardrobe. Right. When they feel like they don't have anything to wear, and oftentimes in terms of the wardrobe itself, they don't have the glue in their closet to pull the things together. Right. That could be a color, it could be a piece, but the jewelry also does that. What I'm interested in, in watching and seeing your things is even your clasps have a little, it's so totally different than any other clasp. You've got little precious jewels at the end of the clasp. Because you're three dimensional. You know, you've got a bag, you've got a front. Right. So if your hair is up, there's got to be. And plus, I just, I wanted to add more than just stringing or just beading or just, that's been kind of, I guess it's become a signature. Well, it's definitely become a signature. Um, but again, you know, it's the juxtapositioning of what I'm going to put with the, st with, with the piece. And in this particular case, there are two, there are two accent green stones on here. Mm -hmm. There's an emerald on the bottom, which is more precious than the peridot on the back. Both are in the same color family, okay. but they play with, they play together really, really, really nicely, and they're they're very friendly. And I combined it with copper and white sapphire. This is the key here. I mean, it's it's an ivory. It's not white, white, white. Right. So it's still an earthy. This was, by the way, this is another Outlander piece. And then the sand of time with the hourglass. So. Well, That's it's very exciting here. to see the creativity that you have put together, and you must enjoy every day that you're in that I store. do. I do now that I'm doing this full-time, and I'm not commuting to Boston right. or, you know, trying to keep myself focused <laughs> on what I'm supposed to be doing and ignoring my spirit, which is kind of what was going on. But now you can inspire other women. Hopefully to so. To really yep. enjoy their jewelry. Now, can, can they buy this online, or do they have to come to Mass? I do have a website, and it's uh, www.etsy-shop.nymphjewels.com, mm -hmm. and um, you can certainly buy it there. But one of the reasons I wanted to go back to a store, you, you've got to touch it. Oh, right. You You've got to, to smell the incense. You've got to smell the wonderful candles. You've right. got, you know, it's an experience. So we have candles. That's right. You just talk about that, yes, too. Yes, yes. And I just had given you, yep. presented to you one of the candles from our Celestial. Uh, my partner and I created a, a, a line of candles that we're distributing throughout the U.S. Um, and it's the Celestial Collection. And it's the star, sun, moon, and new moon, crescent moon. And they're all soy based candles. They burn for 60 hours. They're $30. And um, the, they're a mixture of different scents. And it's really nice to layer them. If you want to burn all four at once, that's great. But anyway, they too are in Matsu. I love giving candles as a gift. You know, you go to a house sometimes and you don't know what to bring them because you don't know their taste. But the candle is always a nice it's easy. little. And it's a nice priced item to and bring. And it's not alcohol. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know, you never know about that situation either. So that's it's safe. True. That's it's true. That's true. It's safe. It's yes. much safer for gift giving. Yeah. But you know, when I going to come out to see you, but now there's easy parking, right? You, so you can park right out front, you said, right? It's crazy. It's, it's just something I, It's a new language for me. Well, after being it's on truly Newbury Street, new you can't find a place to park. Mm -mm. That's and it's, hard, it's gotten harder, much harder. The commute has gotten harder. Parking in Boston's gotten harder. It's more challenging. And I don't know if it's just that I'm over it or it's my age or what it is, but I don't want to waste my time like, doing that any longer. It's not worth it. Now, you're still going to continue with the blog. Absolutely. And you'll be I've doing I've got to get going on that soon. Right. I have a f very good friend who's been helping me with some of my PR, and she's on my butt right now to get December out. So, yes. Now, you talked about the crystal clear this time of year, right? Because maybe the, is it the snow or the air or what? I'm sorry. What's you, you were talking about in one of your blogs about the crystal clearness of this time of year. Uh, no. That might have been January. Probably. Yeah, okay, it's January. You know You're right. You're right. It's January. The clarity of J January is, you know, we go, again, I, 
relate through color. So right. it's probably my art school background, but November is all about the rusts. Right. And the oranges and the browns and the golden tones. And then we morph into reds. Oh, okay. And green, and it's very crisp. And once the holiday season is over, everybody's had their, their parties and polluting their bodies or whatever <laughs> they're doing, <laughs> with sugar primarily probably, um, comes January. And this is, this is, and it's funny because in Japan, here we make all kinds of noise on New, on New Year's Eve. In Japan, it's the opposite. It's silence. It's reflecting. It's internalizing. It's going in. And I'd like to see a little bit of both going on here. Um, January is white. January oh. is pure. Oh, good. January, I'll wear all my white. January okay. is new. That's where winter white comes from. Right, January right. is new beginnings. Great. So it is crystal clear. And it's really all about you, what you want to set up or what you think you might want to set up for the next, achieve for the next year. And um, not, you know, just keeping, keeping, keeping that in mind so that you just don't live day by day because right. life passes you by and then you die. Well, you've been a delight. Well, thank you. And thank I, you. Deva actually Deva, is. Yes. Deva, how they pronounce it. But I am so excited because it's crystal clear that you're going to be a total success. Thank you so much, Matsu. Yolanda. So thank make you. sure all of you go out and visit on Boston Post Road. 92. And 92 Boston Post mm -hmm. Road. And just have experience the wonderful setting and all the great pieces that you'll see there for your home, for yourself, for gift giving. And stop and talk to Deva because I think you're going to really be inspired and feel good about a whole new life for yourself too for the new year. Welcome us back. We'll be back soon with more Style and Glamour with Yolanda's. Thanks for watching. That was 30 minutes.